I think most of us are aware that there's a lot of fake art out there. I think of recent examples, like the fake Mark Rothko, sold by the Nodler Gallery for eight and a half million dollars. Or the Basquiats that were seized by the FBI in 2022 at the Orlando Museum of Art in Florida. And of course, one of the most famous, it was even thought that the thieves that stole the Mona Lisa in 1911 actually kept the original and returned to forgery after they were caught. And although I certainly condone none of that, I think we all understand the motivation behind it. Greed. But what in the heck are you going to do with a fake Frank Lloyd Wright house? Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and here I'm hoping to create a space where we can talk about modern art and design in a hopefully non-pretentious way. And today I want to talk about Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. Well, not exactly. I want to talk about fake Frank Lloyd Wright Falling Water copies. And I bring this topic up because of a conversation I recently had at brunch about that time where I delivered a real painting to a fake Frank Lloyd Wright house. This man lived in Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC. And I arrived at his driveway at the prearranged time and began to meander down the driveway at his multi-acre estate. I went down the hill to the left, and then as the driveway suddenly curved to the right, I saw this. The homeowner greeted me at the door, and the only words I could get out of my mouth were, where the hell am I? He explained that he was the second owner, and that the exterior had the exact same footprint as the original falling water, and then invited me in for a tour. Now aside from me wishing now that I had been more bold and taken more pictures, retelling the story caused me to go home and start to Google fake falling water or falling water copy, and this sent me down a giant rabbit hole. I did indeed find an interview with Michael Berg, the man I delivered the painting to. This interview included a few more pictures, and I was reminded of what he told me, that it was meant to be right on the outside, but with a modern, more open floor plan on the inside. That article also included this picture, and I remembered saying to him, nice Warhol. He bought that, he told me, the day he and his wife got divorced. But that Google search also led me to other articles with titles like, would you pay 25 million to live in a replica of Frank Lloyd Wright's falling water? And Frank Lloyd Wright falling water lookalike asks $3.5 million in Greenwich, Connecticut. And this Wisconsin home bears a striking resemblance to Frank Lloyd Wright's falling water, and it's for sale. I had no idea fake falling waters were actually a thing. And as it turns out, most of these articles were placed there to prop up the real estate market. The $25 million replica was actually a 10,000 square foot billionaire's dream home who had grown up admiring Wright's work. A similar story can be told of the $6.5 million home in Wisconsin. But this had me thinking of other conversations I've recently had in other collecting circles. Watch collectors, for example, deal with this all the time. There's Rolex fake Rolex, and a more recent category, the homage, which are essentially exact copies of a Rolex, but they at least have the decency to change the name on the dial. And what about art? There have been fakes or copies of art for basically as long as people have been able to commodify creative expression. And there are examples of this happening today right in front of our eyes with different levels of justification. France recently paid $59 million to recreate the cave paintings in southern France. The original cave paintings are off limits to the general public, as they are attempting to preserve the original image's integrity. But people line up and spend money to see these fakes. Even my own beloved museum, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, in an amazing stroke of short-sightedness, fell into this financial trap. They removed an entire floor of art just to take advantage of the fact that the copyright on Van Gogh's images had expired and they could install one of those interactive tourist traps to try and make a quick few bucks. So what moral or ethical label do we assign to these examples? No, they aren't illegal, but should we as an audience support these amusement park-like fake exhibitions or should we demand the real thing? Do we justify these exhibitions because they might bring more people into the museum? There are other examples that seem to have more clear answers. 
I think we can all agree that when a Chinese artist living in Queens copies that Rothko and Nodler Gallery sells it for eight and a half million dollars, that is off the charts unethical. But what about the gray areas? After all, the quote, good artists copy, great artists steal, is often attributed to Pablo Picasso. Does a potential buyer in Greenwich, Connecticut think they are buying the actual falling water? I certainly hope not. And what about this Plycraft lounge chair? It's now worth real money and, you guessed it, it's pretty much a copy of the famous chair introduced by Charles and Ray Eames in 1956. What about Duchamp? Did he steal a bicycle wheel? Did he copy it? Or did he make something completely his own? And what if I took a Sharpie to my gift shop balloon dog and signed it Jeff Koons, and then tried to pass it along as authentic to visitors to my home? Would that make me worse than my friend who wears a fake Rolex? Logically, and as time goes by, one might assume that we would have the answers to these questions. But in fact, these questions of authenticity keep coming up more and more. As artists like Richard Prince continue to explore appropriation, as digital versions of artworks become easier and easier to copy, as artificial intelligence is able to make better and better examples of other artists' work, these questions aren't going away. And I know I'm rambling a bit in this video, but I think as we admire work in a museum or buy a chair off of eBay or listen to music on Spotify, we need to challenge ourselves to not take everything at face value to do our due diligence and understand that everything might not be as it originally seems. And I wish I could say it's only going to get easier, but unfortunately, I think the opposite is true. But for now, I can only promise you that I'm not going to sign this Jeff Koons and try to tell you that it's something that it isn't. So what do you think about these fakes or copies in the market, be it a house or a balloon dog or a watch or a painting? Do you think it's going to get better or is it only going to get worse? I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed any of this content, I hope you would become a subscriber. It really helps me out and also helps others to find these videos. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Ciao.